Hello, and welcome to Los Angeles Community Connection, reporting real issues that matter to you. I'm Tyler Chatfield. And I'm Yoel Reyes. Thank you for joining us today. Here are the top stories. For the fifth time in U.S. history, and the second time this century, a presidential candidate has won the White House while losing the popular vote. Americans choose Clinton, but Trump won. How did it happen? For those who do not accept the election results, a petition of three million signers is circulating requesting Hillary Clinton be named president of the United States. For example, in 2012, Barack Obama won 51% of the nationwide popular vote, but nearly 62% of the electoral votes. Trump won the popular vote in states, making up 290 electoral votes. He narrowly lead in Michigan, which carries another 16 electoral votes. Without a doubt, this has been one of the most controversial elections in recent memory. Here is an election recap leading up to Donald J. Trump's win. June 16, 2015, Trump announces presidential run for candidacy. December 18, 2015, Trump calls for a ban on Islam. March 30, 2016, Trump calls for punishment for those seeking an abortion. October 7, 2016, file footage resurfaces of Trump bragging about sexual assault. October 9, 2016, Trump threatens to jail his political opponent. November 8, 2016, Trump wins election despite losing the popular vote. Latinos came out in record numbers to vote this election year. Mainly fueled by Trump's anti-immigrant speeches, election monitors said no many Latinos cast their vote for Trump. Polls show Trump got only 20% of the Latino vote. Despite the large turnout of Latino voters who overwhelmingly voted Democrat this year, Donald Trump was elected the 45th president of the United States. People opposed to the election of the reality TV star and took to the streets in marches and protests across the country, chanting, this is not my president. Marches in downtown Los Angeles swelled to an estimated 6,000 protesters within three days after the election. Already Trump seems to be waffling on campaign promises he made. He now says he will not completely dismantle Obamacare, but will leave some health care mandates in place. According to NPR, in his first 100 days, Donald Trump says he will do the following. Increase military spending. Withdraw from NAFTA. Have China labeled a currency manipulator. Remove any roadblocks in the construction of the Keystone Pipeline. Withdraw billions in financial support for UN climate change programs. Fill the vacant seat on the Supreme Court. Cancel all federal funding to sanctuary cities. Suspend immigration from any region of the globe deemed terror prone. And finally, begin construction on a wall at our southern border to be paid for by Mexico. Apparently, it was too much pain to bear. A study designed to create male birth control was canceled after men reported feeling too sick to continue the study. After two hormonal injections lowering sperm count, the men in the study complained of severe mood swings, depression, and even suicide. From the men who completed the study, researchers found that the procedure is 96% effective in preventing unplanned pregnancies. Everything that glitters is not gold, especially in the world of show business. Casting agencies are the first stop for many aspiring actors. However, you should be aware of casting agency scams. Unlike legitimate agencies, false casting agencies make big on promises they most likely cannot keep. Here are a few red flags industry insiders say you should avoid. Number one, ads that may use any term like follow your dreams, never give up, or you're a star. Number two, casting calls that say you can earn up to $300 a day as a TV or movie extra. Number three, agencies that require you to pay for an audition. Number four, advertisements found from Craigslist classified ads or representatives. Video game productions are on pause, as a big dispute between video game actors and big name animators have led to one of the largest actor strikes in Hollywood. The Screen Actors Guild, American Federation of Television and Radio Artists, were unsuccessful at negotiating a deal with 11 video game makers that would have ended a 19-month strike. 
Actors in the Hollywood Union say video game makers such as Electronic Arts, EA and Disney do not pay video game actors the same as film and TV actors, even though the video game industry make as much money as big name movies. Actors are calling for safe, safer working conditions and transparency. The last video game strike was in 2008, when voiceover actors stopped working for 14 weeks. Are you a senior looking for love or just need company? Los Angeles Department of Animal Care and Control is reducing adoption fees for all seniors this November. The department is celebrating Adopt a Senior Pet Month. For just $7, seniors can adopt a dog at reduced cost. Many of the dogs are already housebroken and like taking long walks with their owners. To see if animals available for adoption, you can visit the Animal Care and Control website at www.animalcarelacounty.gov. Coming up next on Los Angeles Community Connection, find out how some therapists are using holistic alternatives to treat depression. If given the chance, would you date a prince? Hear what LACC students have to say about Prince Harry's newest love interest. Here at the Los Angeles Community Connection, we strive to bring you stories that impact our community, including news that doesn't make the headlines. We bring you our continuing coverage of the Dakota Pipeline protest and any new recent developments. Pressure on those involved in building the Dakota Access Pipeline continues to grow. Activist Susan Sarandon launched an online petition. In it, she is asking people who oppose the Dakota Access Pipeline's development to transfer their funds to a credit union or to completely withdraw their money from major banks behind the project. In a statement made by Norwegian bank DNB, they say DNB looks with worry at how the situation around the pipeline in North Dakota has developed. The statement reads, if these initiatives do not give appeasing answers and results, DNB will consider its further involvement in financing the project. American fascination with the royal family of England continues with Prince Harry's newest love interest. Meghan Markley is a Hollywood starlet who plays Rachel Fane on the American TV legal drama Suits. Now any, pers now any person dating one of the world's most photographed bachelorette, bachelorette is buzz worthy. But what makes this romance different from all others is that the Los Angeles-born actress is biracial. Meghan's father, who is white, is Thomas Markley, an Emmy Award-winning photographer. Her mother, Doria Clinical Therapist from Crenshaw. Is that wedding bells that I hear in the distance? It may be that Cinderella has just found her glass slippers. Now that voters approved to legalize recreational use of marijuana for people 21 and over, what changes can Californians expect to see? As it is with drinking alcohol, it will be illegal to smoke while driving, smoke in public places, or in any location where smoking tobacco is not allowed. Prop 64 does not greenlight the purchase of marijuana for everyone. You still need a medical marijuana card to purchase the Schedule II drug legally. Passage of recreational use of marijuana is good news for more than 6,000 incarcerated people serving time for drug-related offenses according to the Drug Policy Alliance. The policy research organization and major financial contributor of the measure say jail sentences will be reduced. This is seen as a win-win for California jails that are already overcrowded. Legalization of marijuana is expected to create an economic windfall in the billions. Expanding California's marijuana consumer market means more jobs and more tax revenue to put into the state coffers. Like most election seasons, many people tune into Saturday Night Live to get their comedy feel on the U.S. presidential coverage. 8.3 million people tune into Saturday Night Live on its season premiere this year, the highest rated season premiere since 2008. Not just SNL, but shows like Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, Full Frontal with Samantha Bee, and The Daily Show with Trevor Noah have grown in popularity. 
This October marked the most watched month for the Daily Show since they switched hosts a year ago from Jon Stewart to Trevor Noah, making it apparent that this election season, people prefer to get their news right alongside their comedy. Want to up your academic homework game? Now you can. LACC students can use a super mathy techie software called Mathematica for free. The creators of Mathematica are now offering the data science modular software for students for free with a subscription. For the free subscription and login password, go to the math office inside Jefferson Hall on the first floor. Drew Phillips joined us to discuss the latest in health news. He included an alternate use for tampons. Yes, Yvonne and Tyler. For millions of women that dread the time of the month with unbearable cramps, there's a, a new cannabis-infused tampon that might be the perfect solution for relieving menstrual pain. Horia recently invented the world's first cannabis tampon. The two key active cannabinoid compounds, THC and CBD, are found in cannabis. Together, activate certain cannabinoid receptors in the pelvic region when introduced into the body. The majority of users do not report experiencing a psychoactive high when taking for relief, but had a significant decrease in pain and discomfort. To learn more about this product, go to foriapleasure.com. If you, like most people, suffer from depression and none of your medications seem to help, then TMS therapy might be the perfect solution alternative to cure your depression. TMS therapy, transcranial magnetic stimulation, is a newer form of therapy used as an alternative for people who are unresponsive to traditional treatments for depression. TMS therapy uses precisely targeted magnetic pulses similar to what is used in an MRI machine, stimulating key areas of the brain that are underactive in patients with depression. Many users have praised TMS therapy for curing their autism, depression, bipolar disorder, and various other psychiatric mental conditions. TMS therapy is FDA approved and is covered by many health insurance providers. To learn more about TMS therapy and see if it is the right depression treatment option for you, Google TMS therapy. Tony Rilova has an interview with Equal Opportunities Programs and Services, Consular Hector Aguilar and John Alamin, Vice President of LACC. They are going to tell us about different services available to students. Mr. Aguilar, please tell us about your department. Uh, EOPNS is a program for LACC students to help them graduate and to transfer to university. Uh, it is designed to serve mostly students who are first generation college students, which means their parents did not graduate from college, uh, low, income, low income, and also for students who graduated from inner city high schools. Okay. What's your experience in EOPS uh, program? My experience in EOPNS has been wonderful. They have a lot of different services and a lot of help for the students here. Okay. How long you are in the EOPS? Um, I just started um, about this semester, but um, they are very helpful and they give you tutoring if you need tutoring and different other services. Yeah, I'm really happy. Um, they, you know, give a lot of assets that I really need, like a uh, like gas card. Can you tell us about the new services you are trying to implement in the coming years? Well, there are a number of uh, services which we are continuing. Um, one of the main things which we're trying to do is, again, we're trying to promote the college promise. Um, we're trying to increase access to all students. Um, one of the other items is we're trying to make sure that all of our students come here, that they are properly assessed and we give them educational plans consistent with their career or their technical goals and objectives. So we're trying to basically continue to do a lot of things that in the past uh, we did not have the funding for, but as we now have the funding in a lot of crucial areas, we're beginning to give the students the assessment and the assistance that they need in order for them to be successful in their time here. Yeah. That's the main thing. Thank you very much, Dr. Alamin. 
reporter for LACC TV. I am Johnny Rilova. Back to you in the studio. After the break, we'll have sports talk with Angela Knox at the Sportex. And then Tyler Chatfield discusses tipping and gratuities with servers in the restaurant industry. Welcome back to the Los Angeles Community Connection. Tyler Chatfield joins us with a report on how tipping impacts servers. Thanks, Yvonne. How much thought do you put into the tip when you're settling at the restaurant? We sent one of our best reporters in the field to talk to servers about their thoughts on tipping. Hi, I'm Tyler Twight with LACC-TV. We're here today talking to Becca Alarisa. I'm here with Edwin, and we're here to discuss tipping. What are your feelings about tipping as a server? I feel good about it only because I survive off of most of the tipping, so I need it. <laughs> your service was good. You received your food, drinks, good service, and a 20% tip should be given. As a customer, how do you feel about tipping? Well, I usually give, at the very least, a 20% tip now, or, or better, just because I'm like, I know that you live off of this, so here you go. It has to be like really, really, really terrible service for me to tip under 20%. If the service is really good, well, I'll tip um, good too, but sometimes the service is not really that good. And so you feel like they don't deserve that much money. How do you feel about tip sharing programs? Servers survive off of tips here. Like we need our tips. So if someone drops money off at the table, that should be your tip. You, don't, you shouldn't have to let anybody else take it because that was your table. As a boss boy, I do a really hard job. They do my drinks, that cooks, cook my food really fast. And so I think it's fair to share your tip. But what if the rest of the crew is slacking off. Yeah, that doesn't work. Like, that is really frustrating to, you have to do all the job and you get like less tip or the same tip as the other guy that doesn't really work. As a customer, does tip sharing factor into your tip amount? I don't really think of it like that. For the most part, when I go out to eat, I'll just be, you know, here's your 20% or more tip. Reporting live for LACC TV, I'm Tyler Twight. Back to you in the studio. Here at the Los Angeles Community Connection, we strive to bring you stories that impact our community and welcome guests to our studio to share their experiences. Maricela Lascano invites a special guest, Van Adams, to the set of LACC TV to share his experiences as electronic music artist. Hello, welcome to LACC TV. I'm your host, Maricela Lascano. Today we have with us an electric pop duel straight from Arizona. They released their first EP as Van Adams in December of 2014. Six months later, moved out to LA to further their musical career. They are now signed with a new management group. Please welcome Van Adams to the studio. Ooh. <laughs> Hello. Thank you for being here. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you two are from, originally from Arizona. Mm -hmm. What brought Van Adams together? Oh, God. Um, God. <laughs> originally, uh, it was years ago, um, I was a singer-songwriter, and I was kind of playing piano and singing songs, and I was performing at an art walk, and Ivan was in a rock band, and they were looking for a new singer, so they saw me perform, and they had me come audition, and the rest is kind of history. Yeah, um, I was actually kind of, um, she was doing a lot of uh, pop music, a lot of um, like Adele covers and stuff like that, and I just didn't think she would, you know, be up for playing rock music at that time. And uh, luckily, the audition went well, and we kind of went from there and started our, our first group, so mm -hmm. it was awesome. cool. And how have your lives changed since you signed up with Ambiguous Management Group? Yeah. 
Okay. <laughs> um, it's it's been great. Um, I mean, we're still pretty new to to the roster. We just signed this past summer, but um, we're so used to doing everything ourselves that it's just nice to have help. Um, I mean, they helped us with our photo shoot, our um, video coming up, and it's just great. Like we just just having a team of people that um, care about you as people as well as you know like our project, our baby. You know what I mean? And it's it's nice. It's, it's nice to see what other people bring to the table. So. And what are you currently working on right now? We actually have a new single that'll be uh, we'll be releasing in the next month or two. Mm -hmm. It's called Fire, and we're uh, currently working on pre-production for a music video that we'll be shooting for for when we release it. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fun! Mm -hmm. That's very fun. And what kind of music did your parents play growing up? Um, my parents played a lot of uh, country music and musical theater, huh. so I definitely had a lot of musical theater influence growing up. Um, yeah, a lot of that classical kind of stuff. And how about for you? Nice. Um, I grew up on a lot of uh, 80s hip hop and new wave. Um, lots of BC boys <laughs> and still love them to this day. So awesome. that's yeah, pretty much what I grew up with as a child. And which famous musicians do you admire and why? Um, I'm going to go ahead and say um, the, the artist that really um, influenced me to create my own music was uh, Blink-182 growing up. Okay. Um, they, they were a huge influence on me and they, you know, because of them I went out and got my first instrument, learned how to play and all that. So I'm going to have to say them. For me, um, it's two different singers, Adele and Sarah Bareilles. Mm -hmm. Vocally, both of them are absolutely incredible and um, that I've just derived a lot of inspiration from them like throughout my musical career. Okay, and how would you compare composing rock music versus electronic music? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> I mean, um, when we were doing rock music, we were kind of at uh, the mercy of, you know, the producer and studio. Like, we would go in, um, you know, um, um, you're always on a time crunch, you know, because you pay for studio time, you pay for a, a producer, and, you know, whoever is recording you is actually going to be, like, another member of your band. Like, they're going to influence your sound, they're going to change uh, things, EQ, like, you know, her voice, EQ my stuff, like, a certain way, and, um, n you know, and it actually kind of, like, um, in our experience, it really um, um, affected our... Um, creative process, just like having that time crunch, you know, having all those things to worry about. Whereas now, um, you know, we are our own producer, like, yeah. so like, you know, no one's going to spend as much time on your, on your songs like, like, like we are, you know what I mean? So now it's great. Like we can do everything ourselves. Um, yeah. And um, I don't know, it's, it's a lot more, I mean, I'm not going to say it's a lot more work, but it's, it's, uh, it's very, it's challenging in a new way. Like I, I had to, um, I have to think as an artist and an engineer, mm -hmm. and I never had to write music like that. So it was definitely like a rough transition at first, but now it's um, now I feel like we're pretty comfortable with it. So okay, awesome. And the name of their single is Fire. And if you would like to know more about Van Adams, you can visit them at vanadamsmusic.com, or you can find them on Facebook. Or Instagram, right? Uh -huh. Yes. Instagram. Mm -hmm. There you go. Um, thank you for joining us and watching LACC TV. I'm your host, Maricela Lascano, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Baby boomers and millennials came together from all around the world this past October for two weekends of live concerts at the Coachella Valley in Indio, California for the first ever Desert Trip Music Festival. Each weekend of the festival featured three nights of only two shows with only two artists performing each night. Those artists included Bob Dylan, The Rolling Stones, Neil Young, Paul McCartney, The Who, and Roger Waters of Pink Floyd. The festival drew over 75,000 people and grossed an estimated $160 million. The show made history by featuring a lineup of performers who all got their start in the 1960s and are still recording music over 50 years later. The mission of the Bilingual Foundation of the Arts, BFA, is to serve communities by presenting classical Spanish language drama and contemporary plays on Hispanic themes to English and Spanish-speaking audiences, thereby bringing awareness of the diversity of the Hispanic culture through theater. Within this mission, BFA provides educational resources and training opportunities in the performing arts. BFA's vision is to positively 
positively affect the image and self-esteem of Hispanic people to influence the inclusion of Hispanic cultural arts in public school curriculum, to share the beauty of Hispanic drama with the entire community, and to create a pool of talented, well-trained, experienced Hispanic theater artists. On to some lighter stories, we have Jeffrey Morales with some entertainment tidbits. Well, a lot of stuff is new, a lot of stuff is new. The much-anticipated Beauty and the Beast trailer dropped this week following a full spread on Entertainment Weekly. Much of the film has been shrouded in mystery as fans wondered how all the live-action adaptation of the Disney classic would look. The trailer gives us a glimpse into all the fantastical characters. 26-year-old actress Emma Watson plays the iconic character of Belle as we get to see her sporting the classic yellow dress. We also get a first look at the Beast, who is voiced by Dan Stevens. The movie also stars Luke Evans and boasts the many voice talents of stars like Ewan McGregor, Ian McKellen, Emma Thompson, Stanley Tucci, and more. The film opens March 17, 2017. And for all you Dancing with the Stars fans, an emotional night took place as fans watched a heartbreaking performance. On Monday's episode, we found out that a gold-winning Olympic gymnast, Lori Hernandez, lost her grandmother, Brunilda Hernandez, after a long battle with Alzheimer's. She had found out earlier that week, as was seen during the pre-take segments of the show. Feelings boiled over to the live performances. The judges gave the duo perfect scores. They praised Lori for using all that emotion and channeling it for something beautiful for us to watch. Dancing with the Stars airs Monday nights on ABC. So, Jeff, do you have any favorite? Who do you think is going to win this year? Well, really, I don't have any favorites. Just they all look really good, and they're all spot on right now. So it's anybody's game right now. Well, oh. we wish them all good luck. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Regardless about how you feel about the election, one thing we can all be happy about is that we will no longer be bombarded with political campaigns, ads, and commercials. But the election hangover continues for Facebook as it was swamped with fake news. So much fake news appear, appeared on the social media site that pundits accused Mark Zuckerberg of influencing this year's presidential election. Facebook, Google, and Twitter face backlash by allowing the spread of false information. Critics say the social media swayed voters toward Republican candidate Donald Trump. All three social media sites deny any role influencing the election, but say they have placed new advertising policies to prevent fake news from appearing on their sites. Are you getting your lean on or sipping on sea syrup to make it through the day? Purple drunk may seem harmless, but medical professionals are sounding the alarm on cough syrup abuse that is widely popularized by chart-topping music artists. The candy-flavored drink is a deadly concussion of prescription strength, cough syrup, Jolly Ranchers mixed with clear non-cola soda, like Sprite. The codeine-laced drink delivers a rapid pleasurable high, while the second drug, promethacine, has a sed sedating effect. According to the Metropolitan Drug Commission, one in 10 teens have used purple drunk. As the drink becomes more popular, addictions counselors warn of the lingering effects. Once you get addicted, you can't go into withdrawal and just cut it off and go cold turkey. You're going to be very ill for a while. So they're messing with something that really could be very, very dangerous in terms of their treatment. It's your life. Even though Major League Baseball has wrapped up for the season, sports fans still have a lot to talk about this November. Angelo Knox, join us for another edition of Sports Talk. Welcome, Angelo. Thank you. Thank you. How are you guys? Oh, I'm doing Good. well. Yourself? Thank you. Good. Doing wonderful. Doing wonderful. A lot of news in sports right now. Oh, yeah? A lot going on. The Dallas Mavs have reinstated the media credentials of ESPN's Mark Stein and Tom McMahon, SI.com SI reported. Mark Cuban, the Mavs owner, banned the writers from the team's home games in response to ESPN's decision to have Mac Mahone cover the entire NBA rather than focus on the Mavs. Cuban was upset by the current situation of sports news outlets automating coverage of certain sports logic that confused fans. NBA commissioner Adam Silver helped negotiate a compromise between the Mavs and ESPN. The new world of sports is business. Many players want to make top dollars for their service. You might wonder, who's the highest paid team? Well, it's the Cleveland Cavaliers. The average pay for a starter on the Cavaliers is $8.7 million per year. In the 2016-2017 season, 
That's a lot of money to play ball. The NBA as a whole is the best paid sports league in the world with stars earning on an average 5.9 million per year. NBA is raising salaries of these players due to a new TV deal. And as we are nearing the end of the year, let's take a look back at the top five moments in sports this year. Number five, Alexander Rossi winning the Indy 500 on an empty tank of gas. Number four, the Rams moving their football team to Los Angeles. Number three, the Chicago Cubs won the MLB World Series against the Cleveland Indians. Number two, Usain Bolt dominating the 100 meters, 200 meters, and four by 100 meter relay in the Rio Olympics. Number one, the Cleveland Cavaliers won the NBA championship. Pretty good year in sports, if you ask me. Yeah, Angelo, it's action packed. Uh, how do you feel what's going on coming up in December? Anything good? Well, it's been a good year in sports. I'm ready to relax. We got the holidays coming up. I'm ready to kick back and eat some candy. Me too, me too. We may have to uh, go out and uh, sip on some of that purple drink Yvonne was talking about. What do oh, you guys think? I don't think that's a good idea, especially for sports. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank <you>. oh. <laughs> thank you so much, Angelo, for thank joining you, us Angelo. today. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. And that's all we have time for. Be sure to check out our Facebook page at facebook.com, LACCTV, to keep up with all the latest news. Reporting for Los Angeles Community Connection, I'm Yvonne Reyes. And I'm Tyler Chatfield. Thank you for watching. <laughs>